Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. So today, we're going to continue on with microservices and look at one other topic, which is reducing staging iterations. Now, when I talk about a staging iteration, here's a typical uh, kind of playbook or iteration plan uh, for, let's say, the conversion to service-based architecture or even microservices. And notice we've got four iterations denoted here, where iteration one, we have our monolithic entered layered architecture. It looks like iteration two, it kind of stays the same. Iteration three, it looks like we're separating the UI from the back end. Then iteration four, starting to create services within that. But you notice that iteration two visibly or visually has no change in the architecture. And this is a good way of identifying a staging iteration. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> let me give you a really concrete example, a real live example. Let's say that you are converting to either service-based or eventually to microservices. And you would like to start using some event-driven architecture kind of flavor within that um, architecture that is going to use, let's say, RabbitMQ or just any sort of messaging. <clears throat> now, let's also make the assumption that your company has never really leveraged messaging, you have no messaging infrastructure, and your team really isn't familiar with messaging. You can see that this is fairly high risk. So one of the ways of reducing that risk, wouldn't it make sense, before you even get started, is to stand up that messaging infrastructure in every environment, development, integration, regression, production, all the way up the chain. And then knowing the volumes that you have and the type of queues you're going to need or requests you're going to make to actually write test clients in all of those environments, including production, that generate, let's say, a 2,000 user load per second that the queuing then can be tuned for uh, clustering and throughput and have that all set so that when we start reiteration three and four and start creating services that are using messaging, it's far less risk. And the answer is yes, that makes absolute sense. So let me give you a real example. So here's a well thought out plan for moving towards microservices. So let's say we have the current state on March 20th here. And the first iteration, which ends on 520, so it's about two months, is to set up the whole continuous delivery environment. And then the second iteration of our transformation is then to set up the containerization environment, all the deployment scripts, that level of automation, and that's another two months. Again, a little aggressive, in my opinion, but it's a pretty good team, so let's keep those dates on. And then iteration three, which ends a month later, is to separate the user interface portion of the application from the business layer so we can start to tease apart all the business functionality first and then work on the user interface later. It makes a lot of sense. Iteration four, we write those dependent kind of infrastructure services, security, logging, auditing, these sort of things, which would take another month. And then we deploy those. And finally, iteration five, we write and deploy our first customer service. Woohoo! All right, so there's a problem here. While this looks very kind of sound. Notice we're starting in March and all the way to October is the very first time we're actually exhibiting any sort of business value. And so the problem is we can identify staging iteration right away right here because the architecture isn't changing. And notice we're setting up the continuous delivery environment, the container environment, the deployment scripts, the automation. All of this is refers basically to DevOps and setting up that whole operational environment. You know, DevOps is quite interesting when it starts to get to microservices because this is a four-month plan. Again, I think it's a little aggressive to set up a DevOps environment, and let me tell you why. I was once texting, um, this goes back about a year ago, and I was texting a friend and I mentioned the word DevOps. And wasn't it interesting that my iPhone actually spell checked DevOps to devils? And I thought this was so very appropriate and that's an actual screenshot. So then I went to my Mac and was emailing saying, hey, look at this. If you take DevOps and all of a sudden my Mac through email checked it to doves. I don't know, devils, doves, my vote, is devils. And let me explain why. That four months is going to be consumed with making product choices in every one of these categories. That level 
of automation is absolutely required for microservices and it's because of the sheer volume of the number of services we have. In other words, it's not feasible to manually manage the parallel development, testing, release, and monitoring of several hundred applications or services, separately deployed units, in any ecosystem. You know, most teams can get to around 10, maybe 12, but at that point, you need that level of automation. So let's get back to our example here. And we see that four months is being consumed just in setting that up. But that's a staging iteration. So part of the art of architecture migration is to try to make your iterations as small as possible in order to reduce risk, but also provide some level of business value. Now, the problem here is that our business value is not being realized until seven months into this migration effort, and very few business users will ever pay for that. As a matter of fact, they'll tend to deem this whole exercise to move to, migra uh, to microservices as a, quote, science experiment. So the point is there's actually iteration four is another um, staging iteration here that might be necessary. But let me show you an alternative because this is the whole DevOps setup. Anytime you will, uh, let me back up, you will always have staging iterations in any sort of transformation, especially an architecture transformation. However, what you want to observe here are dependencies. So in other words, the way to solve this problem of not delivering actual business value type of functionality until seven months in is to actually not treat non-dependent iterations as an iteration, but rather as a parallel work stream. So here's the point. Look at the dependencies. Our current state starts on 320. Do we need a fully operational DevOps infrastructure to separate the user interface from the back end? And the answer is no. So while we are working in parallel to set up the DevOps environment, we now start the actual architecture transformation. We can separate the UI from the business layer in another month without needing that DevOps environment. As a matter of fact, we can actually write a couple of services, security and auditing maybe, for example, without re reference architecture or reference managers, for example, a reference service, without needing a full DevOps environment. As a matter of fact, we don't need any. We can manually deploy those kind of services. As a matter of fact, it's at this point that we start to realize the actual benefit of doing this because I maintain if you are going to spend iterations one and two, which are circled up at the top there, to create a DevOps environment, what are you basing those on? What kind of services do you have? Probably a couple of canned or uh, sample services or maybe even some hello worlds. And that's not enough basis to determine what kind of tools, uh, service registration, and how that all works. So now, in iteration two here on the bottom, we are now actually deploying real live services that the setup team for that DevOps infrastructure can now leverage. And as a matter of fact, we can actually write that deployment service without a fully operational DevOps environment because now we can still manually deploy that as well or start to leverage some of that setup of the DevOps environment. Now, by the time we get over to here, we find that the DevOps environment is pretty well uh, established and we can try to start to do some trial and error. And at this stage, now we're going to possibly start needing it. But look what we've done. If we start identifying iterations and transfer those into parallel work streams, we can bring potentially, theoretically, this project in four months earlier, realizing, of course, that we do need some sort of team members to be working on that DevOps infrastructure. Okay, so this has been um, uh, 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 Software Architecture Monday, and for more information that I do cover this kind of pattern, as well as a couple of other anti-patterns, I should say, um, you can go to my free ebook, Microservices Anti-Patterns and Pitfalls, um, or I've also got an O'Reilly video on Safari Books Online um, that also shows this pattern, as well as a couple of other anti-patterns as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson of Software Architecture Monday. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and please stay tuned to developer2architect.com, where next Monday I'll be publishing a brand new free lesson. Thank you so much.